Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. I'm Kevin, and today I'm joined by the wonderful <laughs> Amrina. She runs operations here at Viku. She keeps everyone happy and stoked, like myself. That's why I'm always so happy and smiling. And she has a really important question that I think you guys would want to know about. Yes, Kevin, I just, these long sentences are driving me crazy. I don't know what to do with them. Just a whole verbal section with these long sentences. I understand. I cannot understand. It's hard, they're hard to weed through. Well, let me dive in and try to answer that question. Awesome. Um, and this is actually a great tip and strategy and just tool to use in your daily life. There's a lot of stuff you feel like you're studying for the GMAT and you're like, why am I studying this? Why is it gonna be helpful? It's not gonna be helpful in grad school. But this is one of those things that will help you for the rest of your life. Getting rid of the fluff so that you can get to the deep structure. With these big, long sentences, there's lots of fluff. And you just gotta cut away the stuff that doesn't matter to get to the core of the sentence. And ideally with these, so this is a sentence correction question, and ideally with these, you read through the sentence once at the beginning and never again until you choose an answer choice and then you read through again to make sure it sounds good. Um, and that can be hard to do because you know, you feel like you have to go back and figure out what it's saying and read it a couple times, and that's understandable. At the beginning, when you're practicing, you're gonna have to do that. But if you practice cutting the fluff, getting rid of the fat, and finding that like core meaning, that'll really help you in evaluating the answer choices. So this came from the uh, uh, GMAT official guide, uh, the 13th edition. This is question 106. And this is another reason why you want to cut through the fluff. Look, they underlined most of the sentence. It's insane. There's so much to deal with. So let's just read through it once, and then we'll go back. And I guarantee the core of this sentence is only four words long. It's crazy. So originally developed for detecting air pollutants, a technique called proton-induced X-ray emissions, which can quickly analyze the chemical element in almost in almost any substance, excuse me, I apologize for that. Any substance without destroying it, comma, is finding uses in medicine, archaeology, and criminology. So, what is the core of this structure? Well, the first thing that I do is just find my modifying phrases, find my participial phrases, find my non restrictive phrases, and I get rid of them. Right now, at the very beginning of this sentence, we have this long participial phrase that's describing something. Originally developed for detecting air pollutants. That's not core to the sentence. Um, so really, I can just ignore that part. Also, this which begins a non-restrictive clause, which can quickly analyze the chemical elements in almost any substance without destroying it. That is also not important to the meaning of the sentence, or the core meaning of the sentence. So what we're doing is trying to cut away stuff till we get to the subject, and the verb. And so now you can see right here at the beginning, a technique is really the main subject of this sentence. This is what really matters. Technique. Then we have called proton induced x-ray emissions. This is just a long phrase that's describing the technique. So again, I don't have to pay attention to that for the core meaning of the sentence. Then I can skip over my non-restrictive clause and get to the main verb. Is finding uses, main verb and object. And then that's the core meaning of the sentence. Technique is finding uses. And so when you, if you do this at the very beginning of uh, reading the sentence, you're gonna have the core meaning, you're gonna have the core idea, and then you can start to think about the common flaws, the common grammatical errors, the common rhetorical errors that pop up in these sentences. And also you'll be able to look at say like this participial phrase and say, does this actually describe the main subject of the sentence, technique? Originally developed for detecting air pollutants? Yeah, that can describe a technique. And then you can think about this modifying phrase which can quickly analyze the chemical elements, blah, blah, blah. Does that actually describe the emissions? Yes, it does. Um, and so then we know that we can choose A in this case, 
um, and eliminate all the other answer choices. But if you can get to the core meaning of the sentence at the very beginning, cutting out the long modifying phrases, the long clauses, um, it'll make it a lot easier to understand what the meaning of the sentence is, and ultimately, um, then you can start thinking about all the other stuff that you have to think about. All right, I hope that helps answer your question and Amrita's question. Um, I will be here next Tuesday to help out. If you have any questions about this or suggestions for improvement, feedback, anything that you want to tell us, please, below me right now, there's a place to put comments. Put them down there and I will definitely respond. Uh, be excellent to the universe and I'll see you next week.